Welcome to Code Rush Feature of the Week. What have we got this week, Mark? String manipulation, Rory. Excellent. It's one of my favorite things in Code Rush. So uh, let's start with the context here. I've got a person class, and I want to say, hey, my name is, and then say Mark or Rory, or whatever your name is, whatever the name of the person is. Sure. So I want to talk about different ways to do that. So one of the ways is uh, we're going to come over here, and we'll just say plus uh, first name, like that. Sure, yeah. We've written that code. So far, no features yet, but what's cool is we can come in here, hit the code rush key, and choose convert to string interpolation, mm -hmm. and we get that, which That's is very nice. nice. That adds yeah. huge readability, doesn't it, after all? You, you haven't got to, to put the, the, what was the alternative prior to that was to have a little zero in there. Um, and then have a secondary parameter. If you can, if you can have your well-named variables, then this really adds to the readability. It's really nice. Plus, it saves you a lot of typing. All of the characters that were added, this one, this one, and this one at the beginning, are all shift characters. Yeah. They're characters that require two coordinated, synchronized keystrokes. Mm -hmm. Right? You have to have the shift key down when you hit these other keys to get these characters. So they're more complex to hit than the keys that are on the, the home keys, for example, the letter keys. That's right. So Code Rush doing this for me, I'll totally take it. I love it. So that's one of the ways to do it. Another way is to come in here at the Code Rush key and choose Use String Format, where we can come in and get that code. Yep. Right there. I'm used to doing that a lot. I don't, don't use the C-Touch 7 stuff so much at the moment, uh, so I'm doing this quite a lot myself. Uh, this has been obviously in there since ooh, way back in the day, c -sharp 1 or 2 even. Uh, so very regularly, a, a great um, format, to use the pun there, uh, to have things in. And again, to have Code Rush do that for you, to put the string format in place, to put the token in place, much, much more helpful than just having to type it out yourself. Yes. And again, we've got a lot of shifted characters there, the uppercase F, the mm -hmm. parens on either side, and uh, the brace characters uh, as well. Yeah. So... So those are coming in there, and again, it's helping you out. So normally when I'm trying to create code like this, it's usually a template of some kind, like in this case, hi, my name is. So I'll just open the string, I'll start typing, hi, my name is, and I won't really be thinking about the details, the specifics of, of what's going to go into there. So I'll sort of put placeholder items in there, like, so hi, my name is X, close quotes, at which point I like to extract, as I feel it is, the, the X. So you highlight X, and you hit the, right. that code rush key, and then you've got the introduced string format, I think... Um, maybe not have the quiet. So introduce format yes. item. There it is. Right. Uh, and that's fantastic because it extracts that. It adds the string format and it keep, leaves you highlighted on the X portion, allowing you to overtype with whatever it is that is correct for that particular parameter. Exactly. Also a really cool way to solve this problem. Now, mm -hmm. by the way, so so when we notice we started with this, but yeah. to get here, I had to type that plus, which is a hard again a hard character to get to. It's mm -hmm. remote. It's far from the home keys. I have to hold the shift key down when I get it. It's kind of a pain in the butt to actually even get to where I was. What Rory is suggesting is instead of doing, instead of starting here, start here, finish it up, put a period That's or it. whatever you want to do at the mm -hmm. end, highlight the, the, the placeholder string, hit the code rush key, choose introduce format item, and now you can get to first name or whatever you want without ever hitting the shift key, without ever having to hold down the shift key yeah. to get to it. It's really nice. That's so, lovely. So let me show you two more that are cool. Um, one is split string. So, for example, I might have something that continues uh, down here like, how are you? And I realize, you know what, I really want to split this into two strings. So I just put the caret at the point where I want to split it, and I choose split string like that. And look at what it does. It gives nice. me, talk about shifted characters. It gives me the double quotes. It gives me the plus as well. And That's really good, yeah. If you, I mean, that's particularly useful if you have, as you have there, effectively two sentences, which you might want to generate in two completely different ways. Before, they were sort of part of the one thing, and you had to hack them apart manually. And as you say, the, the quotes and the plus, they're very awkward symbols to type uh, compared to sort of normal characters. Once these are separate, you can now extract one of them off one way, one of them off another way, two different calculations, get that, um, that algorithm for each one of them implemented separately and doing one thing correctly. Yes. So there's one other variation of split string, and it works with selections. So if I were to select the word name here, for example, and choose split string, you can see there from the preview, it actually takes my selected piece out as its own string, breaking mm -hmm. one string into three like that. And it notice it highlights it. So I could come in here, uh, choose split string, 
and now replace it, type in something else like last name or whatever I wanted to grab in there, right? Mm -hmm. So I can do that. That's another option there. Have a selection and pull it out. So, um, so yeah, lots of ways to to work with sorry, Mark, oh, just sorry, a, go ahead. Just to break in one last thing. So assuming that you have split the string there using the start and end point of name and that you've replaced it with a name and that maybe you've done this two or three times. So now you've got string one plus string two plus variable one plus variable two, you know, a whole sequence of these things. You can highlight the whole lot of that and have string format be applied to the lot, effectively reorganizing the code uh, into a much more readable scenario. Right. So here, let's show that right now. We're going to go in here, do use string format on it, and you'll see what it gets to. What's nice about that is that you can, well, two things. One is it makes it easier to translate because you see the whole context of the message mm -hmm. as opposed to individual pieces. Also, that's useful for translation because sometimes when we translate into other languages, the position of words changes. The order of words changes because of the grammar Absolutely. rules. Absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> the second, which leads on to one final thing, well, wait. which is that you can now take that string and extract to a resource. Yes, exactly. The last final thing that you can do, or, or sorry, the final thing I can do if I'm translating is I can put this out into a uh, resource file on its own by using extract string to resource. And that's it. Fantastic, Mark. Well, that's a whole plethora of features of the week this time. Thank you very much. And we'll see you again next time for another feature of the week. For more Feature of the Week videos, click one of the two video links on screen or select from our playlist. Download and learn more about Code Rush from the DevExpress website. And be sure to subscribe to our channel to receive all the latest Code Rush feature videos. Thanks for watching. See you next time.